Hello and welcome to the Think Bamboo podcast. I'm your host, JJ, and today we have very special guest, Suzanne Lucas, um, World Bamboo Director from the organization and the foundation. Is that is that correct, Suzanne? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I'm one of the founders of the World Bamboo Organization, um, which was formalized in 2004. And then just in 2021, um, I was approached by a philanthropist who wished to have um, a, a vehicle that we could uh, give grants to people working in the field of bamboo, specifically timber bamboo for construction. And so we um, started the World Bamboo Foundation. Oh, cool. Fantastic. Wow. Well, you're busy. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Busy. And, then, and, and then professionally, I'm a landscape designer and gardener. So, wow. um, yeah, okay. that's how... That's how I earn my. That's how I earn my keep. So. Wow! Wow! Amazing. And I, if I recall correctly, you mentioned at the um, European Bamboo Expo just last week that um, when you started with the World Bamboo um, um, Organization, you used the fax machine to communicate between each other, right? <laughs> yes. We. Um, so what it was is at the time I was the secretary of the American Bamboo Society. Um, which was essentially a group of plant enthusiasts, which a lot of uh, people first getting into bamboo are, uh, you know, meet it through the garden. And um, there was this event going on in Japan that we were invited to. And we traveled with um, the Europe, some members of the European Bamboo Society groups. And at that meeting, we just were also blown away by the fact that we had like-minded people around the world talking and thinking about bamboo, that we said, hey, we've got to somehow keep in touch. We've got to, we've got to somehow, you know, network and stay together. And at the time, there was very few books in English um, about bamboo. So all Chinese and, or, or yeah, there, yes, and actually there just wasn't much published. Um, and then, um, you know, we, we didn't have the internet. Uh, we, there, there was no internet. Uh, I know hard for most people to believe today. <laughs> and, um, and so we kind of set about, uh, uh, having a few different people say, okay, I'll handle the communications from the Netherlands. I'll be the one from Italy. I'll be whatever. And so we started the international bamboo association and kept in touch via fax. And then really only saw each other maybe once a year at an event somewhere. Uh, until we teamed up with INBAR uh, to have some more events uh, around the world at, about every two to three years, if we could manage. Wow. Well, that's, that's, that's really like thinking how that has been like today is really like talking about another universe kind of like. <laughs> it, yeah, it is. Yeah. It is. Yeah. And sadly, and sadly, a lot of, you know, what I'll call the old timers, they've left us and mm -hmm. Um, they've left us with a wealth of information and we just, you know, we just have to keep going. We have to keep talking about the subject and looking back at what we call the pioneers that led us here um, and uh, live up to their, uh, live up to their uh, expectations. Or standard. Standard. Yeah, 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 yeah. So Absolutely. Recent, recently <laughs> we lost Walter Lacey from, from Hamburg, Germany. He, he truly a pioneer and um, Jules Jensen from from Europe from Eindhoven, uh, again in the construction industry, uh, he, he made wonderful uh, achievements uh, so that we could be building with bamboo, which we are probably we are. more than probably more than ever now, and, and, and more and more we will too for sure. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes, absolutely, yeah. 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 Yeah, that's that's what and and um, if I recall correctly, also you mentioned some super interesting things from your presentation regarding um, the history of the bamboo introduction. So um, I remember uh, something like you mentioned there for 18, 1850, bamboo was introduced in France. Yes, and... by by Eugene Mazel. He wow. was uh, he he was a, a a plant collector, but not just for their aesthetics, but for their potential agricultural or economic significance. So this guy and, was like really ahead of his time. <laughs> yes, yes, and that's that's what today. If you visit the La Bambouzere in Andouze, mm -hmm. that that was his home. Wow. So um, and he left that then to his granddaughter, 
uh, mm -hmm. Muriel Cruzet, and the Cruzet family now still still maintain that and have expanded greatly on that amazing place. I hope to be able to visit it someday. It's not so far from where I'm now, so this is one of the goals. <laughs> oh, for sure. it's, it's magic. It's yeah. a magical place. Amazing. And and then it was like 30 years later, it was introduced to the USA, right? Like the first bamboo. A lot, yeah, a lot, of, a lot of bamboos came into the United States. Well, we have three native bamboos that have been identified, yeah. and those were used extensively by the indigenous people that lived here before the Europeans um, colonized um, North America. And so uh, those three bamboos were, were significant uh, ecological species for a lot of animals, uh, habitat and food. And then uh, local people utilize them for, you know, all the things that you see done in any other bamboo country. They were more like cane bamboo, right? Not so thick, like finger or thumb thick. No, or... surprise, surprisingly, the gigantia can get rather large, can get in. If you see old photographs of, mm -hmm. of the old um, where where it was really grown extensively and left alone um, uh, before European agriculture plowed a lot of it over, it got it got about three, it could get three, maybe even four meters tall and oh. um, like an inch in diameter. Okay. But what you see, what you see today are remnants, really remnants from highway buildings, you know, the construction of highways, etc. Mm -hmm. And so if you're driving through north, the states of like North Carolina, Tennessee, you can see these um, just kind of vestiges. Uh, and uh, surprisingly, you know, um, you know, there, there's pockets here and there, but not the vast uh, groves that used to exist. Of course. But then, of course. But then the United States um, Department of Agriculture sent out botanists searching for economically, uh, uh, potentially economic plants for the United States agriculture. And people like uh, Frank Meyer and Ernest Wilson and, uh, oh, who am I forgetting most important, Floyd McClure, um, they traveled to China, uh, all with taxpayer money, to go and find uh, economically potential uh, valuable plants and brought back many bamboos. Mm -hmm. And in the um, 1940s, 50s, there was a lot of expansion of that. Uh, on, and USDA lands, these different bamboos were planted out and evaluated. But unfortunately, it, you know, the the uh, the utilization or further expansion of planting out um, these different species just never came really to pass. Um, I think the traditional timber lobby was extremely strong uh, and held held back any uh, real potential for bamboo. Of course, the invasiveness uh, or perceived invasiveness of some of these crops was a concern. But if you travel through the southeastern United States, you can come across some just amazing, um, amazing groves that are in some cases maintained or otherwise just gone rogue. And uh, uh, some of them, you know, quite large and impressive. Uh, some farmers planted them more for windbreaks, for example, mm -hmm. uh, around a, a traditional maybe vegetable farm or something. And, and so, um, and then they've ended up in residences where uh, you know people were just fell in love with their their beauty and planted them. So there's a lot of bamboo in the United States, but not really as a like a plantation model. Not not quite yet. But is it like kind of starting with this uh, only muscle in what is it uh, Miami, Florida, the one they plant for the paper industry mostly, or well. Yeah, in that case, um, moso is not an appropriate species for the state of Florida. Um, so I think in many cases, the switch is to Dendrocalamus asper. Um, Florida, although we think of Florida as being very tropical, um, it's not suitable for, for Philostachys pubescens or Philostachys edulis, the moso bamboo. It's, it's not suitable. Water quality is very poor. Soil conditions are are not suitable for growing moso. Maybe in a couple little pockets, but actually, it's a plant um, that plant does better in, further north in, mm -hmm. in like South Carolina, Georgia, or over on the Pacific Northwest. Um, you know, a, 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 like north of San Francisco and up the coast to uh, British Columbia, you can grow some moso. But again, in pockets, yeah, um, the yeah. Dendrocalamus asper is a much more adaptable species for the Florida. 
um, climate zones. Which is and, like totally tropical already, even without the well, climate change or um, <laughs> almost. No, it, it's just, no, there's actually, believe it, Florida's a rather large state. So, um, okay. you know, the true, the true tropicals really grow just in some regions, but Dendrocalum asper is a very tough plant and 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 is okay. adapting adapting to a lot of um, areas in Florida, particularly in the areas where citrus had been grown and now citrus uh, isn't quite declined from for, for various reasons, uh, climate change, but then diseases as well. So another company called Rhizome, um, which is part of the Bamboo Living um, Corporation that's based in Hawaii has been planting asper out as well. And and the citrus you mentioned is that because then the soil is is more like um, an acidic or uh, has it? No, 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 the, no, the, no, the opposite. It's, oh, okay. it's more of an uh, yeah, it's more of an uh, you know, it's it's you know, it was under the ocean at one point, so it's yeah. uh, it's it, it in some areas it, it's a very sandy, um, calcareous kind of soil. Mm, okay, okay, okay. Cool. Okay. Um, what about the other topic you mentioned regarding the superfoods, bamboo supplements for food? Yeah. Yeah. This is something I'm really excited about. And I, um, you know, anybody that is not really that familiar with bamboo, maybe has been introduced to a bamboo shoot in an Asian restaurant, right? They, they you know, some people yeah. are like, oh yeah, oh yeah, I think I ate bamboo shoots once. And so, you know, around the world in countries that have, uh, especially the Asian countries, bamboo is a very important food source and a, a favored food source. Um, and then in countries that have bamboo, a lot of bamboo in South America, it, it's interesting that there's never been a, uh, Cultural it's never been bamboo. part of their diet, right? Yeah, yeah. We know that lots and lots of animals eat bamboo shoots and bamboo leaves and all of that, but now, um, with recent science, especially coming out of Panjab University in Chandigarh, India, um, there's a whole department researching the nutrition and, and pharmaceutical and nutraceutical aspects of bamboo shoots and and leaves, of course, not just the shoots, and um, finding so, out finding out all the beneficial aspects of consuming bamboo. Um, so the Maybe yeah. just to mention that the shoots is mostly like uh, eaten like uh, cook. Have you have to cook it like a few times before all mm -hmm. the not so mm -hmm. uh, healthy uh, or what is it called? It's the um, what's the um, there's oh, like I, there's I think there's some cyanide in a lot exactly of cyanide from yeah. The, yeah. The, yeah. the 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 thing the Nazis used as a last option. Mm. <laughs> um, let's not go there. Yeah. Yeah. Let's not go there. Yeah. But um the um so the bamboo shoot is like eatable, and then the leaves. The interesting thing there is I've seen tea from the leaves. Um, Teas tea? and beer and beer. Yeah. But is that with the leaves too, or like a little yes. bit probably because yeah. they still need like the other elements of the classic beer probably. So it's it's like yes. more like yes. of a mixing. An essence, yeah, an essence. An essence, yeah, exactly. Yeah, and and then there is like the third thing regarding foods, which probably you've seen because you've been a lot in in China, is all the um the water or liquor or or, or stuff mm -hmm. they do within like fermenting within. I think it's living bamboo, right? Maybe mm -hmm. you can give some insights here. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I did in in Korea and in China also. Um, they they actually inject um, they inject some um, some kind of ferment fermented uh, alcohol inside the calm. Yeah. Uh, you know, they drill a hole inside, and then um, it ferments inside the living stem and produces what they call like a wine or a liquor. Um, it's quite strong. It's it's quite strong, and you just drink a little bit in a small cup. It's not something that you would uh, fill up your water bottle with. And how is that technically? Because I mean, we have like the bamboo with columns like every ten or twenty centimeters, so they fill it in in one column just, and it stays there. It doesn't like yes. move. Yeah, no, it stays there. Okay. It stays. In, yeah, wow. I don't really understand all how it's done. Um, and then That's I think also sometimes it's cut into sections. Uh, this sometimes there's a translation issue when you're in those places, yeah. but um, it cut into sections and then sometimes buried under the ground. Uh, I don't know what that does to it. Yeah. Uh, it's not my area of expertise, yeah. but it's yeah. pretty amazing. Yeah, I mean, like I mean, also like the rice cooking in the bamboo. In I think this is from Thailand, from Chiang Mai. 
or oh all over yeah in philippines everywhere yeah. they steam a lot of food inside the bamboo uh, a bamboo uh, vessel bamboo. and also they in some of the very large leaf ones they'll roll um the leaf like rice and steam the rice inside with chicken and th there's different dishes um especially indian dishes as well wow. so it, it, it yeah it's a, a beautiful um a beautiful experience to have a bamboo meal so um i imagine you know, I'll yeah. have to try it once, once. <laughs> but the supplement thing back to that. So the interesting part is there that like most of our vegetables today and probably also the fruits are like having less nutrients than probably before because they're mm -hmm. already like improved. They're bigger, mm -hmm. they're yeah. all that. And of course, like back in time, uh, fruits were smaller, had less meat and probably more taste and more nutrients, right? <laughs> Yeah, and 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 this is where sure. I, I think where the bamboo, um, it it would be a, um, you know, it, it it would be a process where the the bamboo would be made into such a powder. So this mm -hmm. would be what they call like uh, food to food fortification. You know, a lot of our cereals, um, think of cereals and protein bars and a lot of um, processed food are fortified to make them healthier. Yeah. Um, like vitamin C fortified or stuff like that, right? Yeah. Ex exactly. Yeah. So I could see in the future um, with this current research that's going on that there might be a potential to actually have a natural fortification of, with the bamboo, the essence of bamboo, bamboo, which would give it the amino acids and all these other wonderful um, thiamine and all these other uh, elements uh, there sh it's showing um, the results of, of these experiments are showing a, a reduction in diabetes, for example, with the, uh, consuming um, these nutrients in this fashion. So, yeah, it's got a lot of potential. Wow. Um, something else that was mentioned um, uh, by Jennifer Snyders was that, uh, you know, in a lot of countries, people feed bamboo to their animals. Yeah, um, yeah. Ex Philippines, especially a lot of chicken uh, chickens uh, are eating bamboo. Uh, my own son has chickens and he feeds bamboo leaves to his chickens as well. Chickens and cows. Daphne Lewis, uh, who is um, Bamboo Farming USA in Georgia, she's doing a lot of research, feeding all kinds of um, different uh, domesticated animals, you know, goats and, and, and I don't know about sheep, but cows, bamboo leaves. To, just to wow. give them something very nutritious um, and is it do you know is it like a specific bamboo type probably the one they have but um, it's what it's what they have yeah it's what they, it's have, what they yeah. have yeah because that's my other question right i mean uh, thinking like for myself now i was like thinking oh i should really try like fresh bamboo tea so i know a neighbor who has bamboo here is some kind of dwarf bamboo i'm just gonna get a few leaves and cook them right <laughs> yeah um i think what um again with the tea making um there's several people in the u.s doing that now and it's yeah. just the new you want to get the new leaves it's kind of like okay, that's when you're point. making yeah when you're making like tea from the camellia traditional camellia you plant the, yeah. you're, you're trying to get the fresh the fresh leaves mm -hmm. yeah yeah same thing with the guayus i remember in in the amazon of ecuador it's really the fresh one the older one it's uh not so tasty anymore and yeah <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah okay that's that's good to know so everybody can try this basically uh because there is so much bamboo like everywhere already and probably most of them will be bambusa vulgaris which is like one of the most planted ones because it's it's everywhere yellow, it's <laughs> everywhere and people like uh yellow bamboo <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah um and it was interesting regarding the bambusa vulgaris i don't know if you talked with um thomas from uh, bamboo uganda but he mentioned mm -hmm. They're working currently with Bambusa Vulgaris regarding constructions and all the prototypes they're doing because the um, Dendrocalmus asper they planted, well, it's going to take five more years. So mm -hmm. until then, they have like lots of, of uh, Bambusa Vulgaris and that's what they're using and they're treating it somehow and it's, it's kind of working for now, which is better than nothing. Right. <laughs> Well, yeah. um, bam and Bambusa vulgaris is one of those pan-tropical plants. I mean, it's it it was moved around, you know, probably with Marco Polo and whatever. Yeah. It's 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 all over the place, and um, yeah, pe people use it locally. Uh, most people just uh, treat it with salt water because a, a lot of it's growing, you know, in coastal regions. So submerging. They, 
yeah so merging like, that's, it. Just, 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 that's it yeah yep yeah, yeah. and, and for how long people, that, like two for weeks some people or... that's a preferred oh that i don't know um, okay but okay, that that's I... one thing. So like a uh, big rock and then submerging it in salt water. I mean, that's easier than the borax uh, thing. You have to get all those special uh, chemicals, which is like yeah. kind of tricky and sometimes right. very expensive today. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, depending where you are, of course, if you are maybe in, in a rural or urban USA, it's, it's not so complicated. But uh, if you're really uh, somewhere in Africa or <laughs> in South right. America, it's a, yeah. it's a bad idea. <laughs> right. Like that yeah um so the supplement um also regarding the bamboo introduction i was wondering um um so we have the usa was 30 years after france with the ones you mentioned and um i think um we, we still i mean it was introduced but now we're still like kind of discovering like every year or so new species right Oh, yeah. And there's still plant collectors. Luckily, there's still people traveling all over the place. In, in the United States, Robert Saparito from Tropical Bamboo, he's every year bringing new species to the United States. Um, the USDA, it does have restricted uh, prohibited entry status. So when it is a uh, new species is brought to the United States, it does have to go through an inspection and then a one year quarantine. One year. Uh, one year, which wow. is a very long time. Yeah. Uh, and who yeah, takes care that's... of the plant? And is it like something? I mean, it, it, else it wouldn't like survive, right? <laughs> no, they yeah, they have people that maintain the greenhouses for the Department of Agriculture, and um, wow. yeah, it's yeah. a it's a long process. But there, you know, there are um, I should know this number, but I don't. Easily two, three hundred different types of bamboo in the United States, probably much more than that, um, uh, because people along the way have a big class. So after the USDA stopped doing like official importations, there were only a couple permits allowed um, through that inspection facility. And the American Bamboo Society was able to get these um, very sought after import permits. And so um, that was one of the main goals of the, United, uh, of the American Bamboo Society, which was formed in 1979 was to expand our bamboo collection um, in, within the United States. Now, the more tropical ones are only grown in Hawaii or very Southern California and a little bit along the Gulf Coast, like in Louisiana and then Southern Miami. Mm -hmm. But mo the majority of the bamboos in the United States are Asian, um, uh, Chinese or Japanese or Korean for colder, colder temperate uh, bamboos. And so there's a plethora of different philostachys and Sasa and Pseudosasa and all, all of you know all the all the known suspects, uh, but it's a impressive list um, that can be found if you're curious. That can mm -hmm. be found on the American Bamboo Society website. It's just called the source list, and that's bamboo.org. Um, you can find that if you're interested, uh, which is actually an excellent document. It it gives uh, it gives uh, cultural um, it gives cultural information and and actually where you can find it in the United States, you know, a supplier, for example. Oh, okay, but it's so limited the, to the United States, but there it yeah, is. Yeah, <laughs> right. Yeah. I don't know if Europe has such a thing, but... Uh, Maybe France probably, or... Yeah. Yeah, I'm sure like with the bambooserie, uh, you know, I, I'm sure because they have a, an extensive collection and, uh, and Eve... Yves Creuset, which was at the expo the other day, it was great to see him again. Um, you know, he was a constant collector as well. Mm. As was Muriel, his wife. So, yes, they have a they have a large collection. Okay, so it's really worth again visiting the Bambousserie in uh, in France. It's in the yeah. south of France, somewhere. Yes, kind of, yeah, 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 north of uh, near Marseille, not near so Marseille. Far. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. cool. And uh, yeah, regarding the European Bamboo Expo, do you have any um, impressions you want to share or, or like? Uh, well, things? well, it was it was simply wonderful um, on a, on a several fronts. Uh, one that we hadn't really been able to physically get together in a few years, us yeah. collectively, right? The world. Yeah. So it was Absolutely. wonderful to be out and, and and be together and share a passion for something that. Uh, it, it's an interesting, you know, the whole thing's interesting. Like, you know, I have friends, I live in Massachusetts, it's a cold climate and there's not too much bamboo around here. And people are like, what is it with bamboo that keeps you going? And I really can't explain it. I, I, it's just, it just, it is because it's, 
fascinating. It's a large group of plants. Um, they're not only beautiful, and not every one of them is beautiful, but most of them are beautiful. Yeah, and that's true. It, <laughs> and I'm probably I'm a naturalist to begin with, so I, I I'm always looking at the ecosystems where these bamboos come from, and I you know for me that's that's fascinating enough. But then when you throw in all these all the utilization and all the traditional cultural uh, applications throughout time, depending on wh whatever country you're in where, that has native bamboos. And then there's this remarkable group of people that are just so committed. It's it's just a wonderful feeling. And so it was really nice to be together, to meet people I had not met, but only seen online like yourself. And then, to see, old, and then to see old friends. So it, it was really rewarding. The level, um, the level of the presentations was very high, very informative. Um, the speakers were all really well prepared. I thought the audience, the participation, even that level was, you know, quite knowledgeable. And um, yeah, you know, sometimes so I feel like sometimes I feel like we're the, you know, preacher uh, preaching to the choir. Um, you know, because a lot of this bamboo information, we, you know, we're all exploding, wanting it. You know, why doesn't everybody? Why isn't everybody grabbing onto yeah. this? because it's really something. But um, I think that's happening. You know, I think that it's it's slowly happening when the word bamboo is mentioned at the United Nations, that's a big deal. And um, and now, you know, um, the whole climate issue has put a lot of us, our backs are against the wall and, yeah. and, and people are, are rising to that urgency that we have to change. You know, we cannot continue doing things the way we have been doing it. And so, uh, yeah. so, so, you know, it, you know, you just want to see it on the cover of the Economist magazine <laughs> or the front of, um, I don't know what, how, yeah. where people get their information anymore, but it's, 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 yeah. it's, it's our job. It's our job to get out there and tell the world um, the importance of bamboo. And that's what we're doing right now. So uh, you're yeah. helping a lot here and uh, I'm trying to do my best too. So I think yeah. uh, we're advancing. <laughs> for yes. sure. By the Absolutely. way, I love the background. Uh, we see some bamboo in the background of your window. Oh, this looks amazing. Yes, that's um. Oh yeah, that's uh. That's just a screen that my sister found at a thrift shop. Wow. I know. It's um. Oh, just like a. Uh, that's a greenhouse behind there. I, mm -hmm. I'm sitting on a, on a on a enclosed terrace, and that's just a little screen background there. Um, very simple construction. I'll take some closer pictures of it yeah. and send it to you. Looks Maybe beautiful. you can. Maybe you can recreate it. It's some kind of philostachys <laughs> and it doesn't look too complicated. Well, it looks beautiful. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm, I'm super I'm excited and I have, I think, uh, a lot of good content. Maybe you can share your uh, presentation or, or you have it already on your website on the World Bamboo. Um... No, I, no, I should I should put that on there. Yeah, yeah I can do that. Yeah. Or, or I can share some slides. Maybe I'll do a blog post about our podcast to mm -hmm. enrich it. And um, yeah, I think, um, I don't know, is there anything upcoming um, projects or, or things you want to well, mention you know, maybe? You know, I'm glad, I'm glad you asked me that. Thanks, because I was, I, I meant to, to, to make a couple announcements uh, okay. last week at the expo, <laughs> because there is, um, oh, I wonder if I can find it really quick. There is a, there's going to be a study days uh, in Belgium mm -hmm. at Jan Oprin's garden. Um, let me see. Um, one of the um, World Bamboo Ambassadors is Jean-Luc Couyunji from, mm -hmm. from France. Mm -hmm. He works at a wood laboratory, but he's setting up a, um, a, a, a work day on, let me see. Yeah, so it's near Antwerp mm -hmm. and it is on, july 31st the 31st of july 31st so i'll be post I, I, yeah i'll start posting this so we can uh, get the word out um some of it's going to be like morphology and propagation techniques mm -hmm. and 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 some wood wood details um so that that's coming up um with jan oprins and, and jean luc and then the american bamboo society is having their annual meeting in louisiana uh on the weekend of the uh fourth of november i believe again I'll, I'll get this out to everybody mm -hmm. but that's an incredible opportunity because it is located on avery island which is in louisiana in um, the middle of the mississippi delta 
oh. where where E. A. Malcohenny uh, imported bamboos over a hundred and something years ago, and giant moso, giant Whoa. bambusoides. It is a bamboo jungle. It's really an incredible place to go um, oh. for bamboo eating. So um, <laughs> I will I will post that. That's the first week in November, and then we have the World Bamboo Workshop uh, being held in Guatemala. Tona. Tono and Juan Pablo were there in, in Dortmund at the expo to promote, to, you know, share their experiences. Um, that's the 27th, um, yeah, 27th through the 30th of October in Guatemala. And then next April, we have the World Bamboo Congress in Taiwan. And that's why I'm going to Taiwan on Friday to meet with the forestry ministers and the National Craft Research Institute as those are two of our hosts, along with the Taiwan Bamboo Society. So there's yeah. things coming up, and hopefully there's going to be lots of things online. I think Inbar has um, has uh, an event coming up online in November as well. So um, there's things happening. Oh, wow, that's pretty cool. So anybody being in, in the U.S. during those times, um, there is plenty of very interesting uh, events. Um, yeah. Yeah, um, the details the details yeah. for that are bamboo.org. That's the American Bamboo Society. Okay. Just bamboo.org. Yeah. Okay. Fantastic. Yeah. I'll include it into my blog post so we have a complete yeah. uh, um, information there. Fantastic. Okay. Well, um, then I think we're we're good from my side. If thank we're you. Good from your side, thank you very much yeah. for your time. And uh, no, it was you... great. It was uh, great. It was great, yeah, too, and the great meeting you also in person in Dortmund. Uh, that was cool, and meeting all the other person because, yeah, the last three years were kind of uh, not so uh, uh, physically meeting people. So this is uh, something very positive to really yeah. get a hold of the people and and see them. Yeah, and, yeah. I mean, the, the the internet the internet is great. Your podcast podcasts are wonderful but there's nothing like meeting in person exactly so exactly let's really let's keep it let's keep it up i look forward to the next time fantastic yes me too looking forward to that fantastic okay. Suzanne. thank you very thank much you. take All care right. bye bye, -bye. Thank Have a you. Good. bye bye